Justice and everyone. Today we're presenting about the FSA suspension design. Our team consists of Michael Benitez, Jason Oliveira, Ali Berichi, and myself, Abdullah Sif. So, for the motivation that we have uh, to start for this project is that we'll be able to compete uh, with many teams around the world in the 2017 uh, competition that will occur in Michigan. And uh, we will get to uh, show and uh, demonstrate all the knowledge that we've gathered um, through this project to not only uh, other teams, but also industry professionals. So um, this, uh, this semester we're working uh, closely with uh, uh, other various uh, uh, senior teams that are actually going to be graduating this semester, um, which are the suspension team. Um, what our goal is and our purpose in this uh, competition is to be able to uh, design a, a suspension system that will hold up to uh, all the uh, standards. And um, uh, all the components that we'll be able to make, or that are that are making, are the uh, uprights, the hubs, the uh, control arms, the belt cranks, and the rotors. So for a literature survey, we first had to research uh, all the uh, various components that we'll be designing. Uh, but due to time constraints, in this case, we'll only be talking about the two main ones, which are the uprights and the hubs. So uh, for a literature survey, in this case, uh, we'll start off with the upright. Um, for the uprights, the main goal of the uprights is just to hold the hub together with the control arms and the wheel. Uh, and then in this case, uh, our um, upright has the axis of inclination that's been chosen up 90 degrees to help us uh, steering. Uh, for our hubs, our front hub is just a standard hub that we've been running through from previous uh, semesters. But our new uh, addition to the, the suspension in this case is going to be our integrated uh, tripod hub. The whole purpose of this uh, hub is to reduce weight and increase uh, uh, torque transfer. So for a relator of uh, service standards in this case, uh, we've been following closely uh, the FSA rules uh, because we don't want to get disqualified. So we do have a broad uh, have a broad um, selection of what we can do with it, but we do have certain limitations as far as uh, our wheelbase, as far as the right height, and certain constraints that we can take into account. Uh, as far as SAE, we're following uh, SAE specifications very closely for, as far as design, uh, safety, and then as far as uh, for sele material selection, we did the SDM and this. So for project objectives, uh, one of our main goals is to improve the safety of the uprights and mass, which is definitely something that you want to reduce in a car. Um, we want to place as a team in uh, the overall top 50, and in order to achieve this, we have decided that uh, we want to get at least uh, 20 out of 25 in our specific suspension system. Uh, addressing global design, we have standardized all bolts. Um, last year, we had several difficulties um, with different bolt sizes and dimensions, so we're trying to standardize that. For the easy of manufacturing, we're trying to, well, we did, already shows um, the radiuses and the fillets to be a standard um, diameter so that um, there's no need for a custom tool in order to make our parts. And we also have a multi-language patterns. Uh, one of well, the, our main constraint was time. Instead of having pretty much eight months, which is what you usually have to design, um, do the analysis, and the manufacturing over your um, project, we only had four months. So it was a really, really tight um, deadline. Also, as well, the money-wise, uh, we're competing with teams around the world that have way higher budget than we currently have. So we're trying to make uh, the best engineering possible with uh, with our with our resources. And for manufacturing capabilities, we're having um, several of our components outsourced. But as well, what we can do in-house, we're trying to um, do it. As for example, the Aeons. But um, we don't have the sources to make the rest of the components. And um, we're definitely bound to the FSA rules. Design alternatives. Um, our design was made out of uh, many, many iteration processes going back and forth again. But due to time constraint, I will only talk about two different design alternatives. As you can see here on your um, left, you see the front upright. Um, this was one of the designs, but it had to be redone because the Ackerman analysis that we had done for the steering did not, um, we couldn't introduce that angle. It had too huge of a level arm, which is not a good engineering um, design. As you can see here in the middle, those radiuses, um, we had to adjust them because those are high stress concentrations. And as you can see here, this is one of our um, rear designs, but the mounts 
uh, was really difficult to make the mounts um, for this one because they were so far apart. And after we did the analysis, it was um, high, like we had a higher weight than we wanted for our system to have, so we definitely also did not go with that. Uh, for the second um, uh, design alternative, as you can see here, that is their um, rear uh, front upright, I'm sorry. And the reason why it was made that way was for less manufacturing cost, but it did not um, meet to our standard after we could, uh, did the simulations on it. Here for the center, um, as you can see in the center, is the hub, and we had done those um, threads in order to put all the systems together using a custom nut, but that would definitely increase high um, increase our manufacturing costs, and it's really difficult to make that um, uh, those thread and as well the custom nut. So we had to instead we just made a plate and then uh, put bolts in it to tie it everything together. As you can see here, once again, was the fact that it was this part where the mount goes was not thick, it was too thin for and it acted as a cantilever because the loads are going to be reflected there. So that's also why we didn't go with those designs. So now you will see um, all the proposed designs, and this is currently now being in uh, manufacturing, which you will be receiving them soon, and uh, pass it on to the clients. So the simulations that we uh, conducted on the components, they took into account forces the, that were due to acceleration, braking, and cornering of the vehicle. Uh, the simulations used the bond misses and distortion energy theorem in order to calculate the maximum and minimum stresses as well as factor safety. Over here we can see the simulations for the front upright. You can see that the ma major uh, area for maximum stress is occurring towards the lower region of the front upright where the, where the lower air arm is going to be connected to the front upright. Uh, it's causing a maximum stress of 13,000 psi with a factor of safety of 3.1. Next, we have the front uh, upright, uh, the front hub simulation, and we can see that the maximum stress is occurring along this edge, which as it was occurring in the design alternative one, except that the maximum stress here is 8,300 psi, which is far less than it was on the f uh, first alternate design. The resulting factor of safety is a 4.8. Next, we have the rear upright simulation. And we can see that the maximum stress is occurring on the mounts that hold the braking caliper. So the maximum stress is only going to be occurring when the, the vehicle is going to be uh, doing some hard brakes. So uh, the maximum stress was uh, 18,600 psi with a factor of safety of 2.14. Finally, we have our rear hub simulation. And we can see that the maximum stress is occurring on the same edge as it was for the front uh, hub and it's causing a maximum stress of 7,000 PSI with a factor of safety of 5.7. This is our uh, project timeline, and as you see now have mentioned uh, previously, uh, we do have a lot of time constraints, so we've already begun our manufacturing uh, phase for our project, and we uh, plan on completing all of the manufacturing by the end of this year. If in any case, if we are not able to complete it uh, by the end of this year, we do have some leeway gap, which is going to be happening next semester, uh, in order to f uh, finish off the, uh, finish off the manufacturing and then uh, conduct the testing and validations. As for the responsibilities uh, for the project, we tried our the best. Uh, we tried our best in order to divide uh, all the responsibilities among the four of us as equally as possible. For design experience, we, we use our standards as mentioned before. The main standard that we're always going to be using throughout our careers is the ASME, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, which has the, the, I'm sorry, the, the responsibilities and ethics of engineers that we must follow. And then we have the contemporary issues, which is mainly our budget, and also the budget around the world, like third world countries, since we're trying to reach the global aspect with our design. That's our biggest issue. And then impact, again, the global constraints, just like the, the third world countries, which is the budget. For lifelong learning, working with others, working with others is going to be a huge aspect in our lives. Uh, we, the best way to work with others is to know each other's strengths, so we can divide the workload to, to provide and, and result in the best, uh, the best design and workload. And also, uh, learning when to be professional. We'll be having meetings and we have deadlines we must meet. We have deadlines not only with the class, but also with SAE that we must follow. And if we miss those deadlines, we will just get disqualified.
and also there's always a better way throughout engineering world uh, there's always a better way to do something that's our mentality as engineers uh, as we see with our iterations we have hundreds of iterations with just one design and I'm sure if we spent another month or so we'd probably get even better designs and better results but as to our time constraint we had to finish up the design and start manufacturing and then the cost of benefit ratio instead of going with a carbon fiber we ended up having to go with aluminum because the benefit of carbon fiber outweighs the cost and the aluminum is much cheaper and again we're trying to reach the global aspect All right, every part is redesigned from last year's designs, but the biggest redesign we had this year is the Belgian wishbone design assembly. And also the main focus of this year, as, as stated, was a tripod, which lowers the weight and also increases the power transfer to the wheels. And then again, our main goal is the competition, which is the second week of May, and we're trying to reach a 20 out of 25 points and hoping to, as a team, as every team, as there's multiple teams, to complete in the top 50 ranking. And as we are just a suspension team, there's also the aerodynamics team, there's a chassis team, there's a powertrain team, and I'm sure you're going to have another senior team on Wednesday about the chassis that, are, that they are going to talk about. Thank you. This is our poster. Any questions? Um, so you guys did analysis of your parts. Did you do that before or after you ordered them? Definitely, um, before ordering them. <laughs> so, why did you guys settle with such a high factor of safety when your design criteria encourages like lower weight, um, essentially higher risk for a better performing vehicle? So, what happens with the hub, you're referring to the hub, is that it's the first time ever that we have, we're making a tripod integrated system. It's usually more than double that um, weight that we currently have. So since it's also our first year, and not only is, um, we're not considering there the fact that it is aluminum and the tripod is steel, so it's gonna be um, definitely a wear factor. That's why we left it and we did not increase more the weight of what we currently have. Now for the team's year to come, they can say how we performed this year, and they have something to compare with, and then definitely go ahead and decrease the weight. But the amount of weight reduction that we already have is sufficient, and we also want to be safe, because as you can see, not only is it the first year we want to compete, we want to achieve it on the top 50, and then it's also a high cost part. So you definitely have to see that in case you fail, you don't have any backup, you don't have anything else to go with. So our, that's our main purpose is to complete a 30 minute circuit around the track, so that's, that's basically, we all, we, the first time we were able to complete that was last year, so out of redesigns, we're trying to make sure that nothing will fail for this year, we want to place higher with better designs. Um, in your simulation, you also simulated uh, voltage joints, how exactly did you do that? The what is it? The voltage joints. Voltage joints, okay, so you can still look at the slide, the final slide. It's not there. Okay, so this is definitely how you're gonna see the loads are acting on the on the vehicle on the throughout the, the components. So the way we did it is that we know that our car is gonna be braking and corner and your car is gonna be accelerating. So we took um, I think it was 2.5 and 2.35 G, which is something that we expected it to be 2.3. That's our goal to achieve. 2.5 is gonna be way too high, but um, we computed those loads and then um, as you can see here, this is the you have the lateral, you have the, the normal load, and then <clears throat> one the ways one of the ways that we did it is that we um, fixed the bolted parts and then we did those loads to see how the suspension was gonna be affected by like, because that's pretty much what it's gonna. Be. So I'm really concerned by your bolted uh, holes because the way you accurately simulate that is by uh, creating a spring which is representative of the uh, tension in your bolt and um, I don't think you guys have gone over like where your torque requirement will be for that bolt um, as well as like anything you'll do to improve the actual torque applied to the bolt and if you have a stress concentration in there, I'm really worried that when you apply the brakes hard, you're just going to shear the bolt. Well, compared to last year's design, it's um, a higher factor of safety. And last year, it compete and it's still a running car. But also, we our simulations are even um, higher in the range of what FSAE, um, you know requires you to do. 
So we definitely looked up and, and spoke with some professionals on how to do this, and this was like um, the explanation or like one of the ideas that they provided to us. So that's why we are currently like, not only is that it gave us a view factor of safety that we took into account all the loads and if we calculated them, but also we have seen our car from previous year that had even a lower and it brought and it completed, so that's why we're currently like, okay with our results. Well, in, in addition to that, those simulations show at maximum speed, at maximum braking, and at maximum acceleration. So the results shown there is if it's like the maximum capacity of the system. Now each component was tested uh, by the maximum loads. Therefore, yes, here you'll show it shows certain areas of, of like contact or certain areas where it's at risk. But even though it shows high like high stress or high, if it's not risky enough to be able to say, oh, well, it, it's gonna fail. Plus, it, it, it does have higher factors of safety compared to previous year. They are a bit high, but that's because, or at least in the components for the hub, um, it, it is kind of like what we're going to say as like, this is, if, if it worked this year, it should work for next year. So, that, that rationale works here because you're building a car that's like a little kid car. Correct. Um, but you don't want to walk into industry with that rationale. Correct. Um, your material mismatch is really concerning for your bolt to joint. Um, you haven't picked the type of material for your bolt, you just said you standardized it. So you've gone with the torque spec, I assume you have no lubrication. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. SAE has a standard for the bolts. So they tell you, for this part of the suspension you can only use, I think it's um, um, SAE 8, um, was it? 8 side bolts and then this yeah. dimension. So. It's really crucial that. Yeah, so you can you can constrain the dimension of the size, but if I tell you an A286 bolt, which is very strong steel versus like a press uh, bolt, you're looking at twice the strength. And so if you're not using the correct material on your bolt, you'll definitely break um, your system. So that, that's what I'm concerned with, is that you guys are looking at this from the top view, but the details is what's, what's gonna catch you because um, it's it's happened to me where I created a pressure vessel and I used the wrong material for the bolt and I ripped my threads out of my insert because my analysis says it said it was good, but I didn't come to think that my actual like preloading on my bolt wasn't correct because I wasn't actually following like torque specs or lubricating or using the right bolt material that I had assumed I was going to use. So I'm, I'm just saying that you guys should take a look at that before you I like. Know the bolts are going to be still. Like I said, um, that's the ones that all the teams are running, and they have worked fine for, and also uh, for last year team. So. I agree, but to me that's not an acceptable explanation. Like saying that last time it worked means that this time it should work is the same thing as saying like the Columbia space shuttle was fine, and then. It blew up. So that's pretty much yeah, the same rationale. Yeah, but in they industry, use. where you the way you work around industry, even when you design a plane or any type of system, is that you cross reference to what other companies have been doing and what their outcome of their um, design has gone to. So that that's why. But I do definitely gonna take it to this way. You, you use that as an uh, as a starting point, but you always rerun all the analysis. Mm -hmm. Correct. You, you never say because it happened before. We're just gonna take that for granted. Right. Um, it should give us the starting idea, and then run the analysis. And make the problem sure. is that the analysis last year was probably also wrong, and so all your numbers are based off incorrect assumptions, which is my issue. Because I've seen this SA team personally. I worked on this SA team when I was here, and I know that they do not do a very good job of paperwork modeling or analysis. And so I'm just concerned that you guys are continuing in their steps when you guys could be doing a lot more and a lot better than previous years and you're only constraining yourselves because you're just saying eh, it was last year so why don't we just use it this year well we still we still ran simulations yeah i agree so it's not like hey it, it, we're just putting values to it no we're, we're actually calculating the loads the correct loads that are actually being transferred through our arms and we're also doing all that we did the bearing analysis to make sure the bearings don't fail we did uh contact uh analysis between parts so I mean, it's we not have done, shown, we have but it, it was all taken into account. Yeah, we we have to make sure all this stuff, just to select materials. Right, the, as far as when you say there's two materials that maybe you have an issue with, and it's when maybe the hub, right? The hub's made out of aluminum, and then <coughs> the shaft is made out of steel. As far as that, we, we 
did notice this, and we did notice that there might be a little bit more wear than than could be anticipated. But we, we did think about that. And then as far as expansion rates, if in case there is some temperature, it's still not to the point where it will lock. So we did take into account all that. Yeah, my, my biggest concern is you can't answer me what torque you're going to torque your screw at. What bolt? What torque, what torque, what torque rating you're going to put your screw at. And that's like a very is that straightforward hang back. Like, on, like you're, you're talking about for like the control arm? Yeah, for anything. Oh. You, 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 you can't tell me that size 8 bolt will be torqued at 50 inch pounds, 100 inch pounds, 200 inch pounds, 100 foot pounds. That doesn't mean anything to you, and that's super crucial to the integrity of your mechanical system. I think you guys need to evaluate. We'll, we'll do a, a tolerance stack up and then also a, a torque stack up. Yeah, I, I think it's, and you'll learn a lot from it because I don't think many people actually realize that that's important. And also, I would agree to lubricating of bolts and why it's important. Quick question. Those plots you showed, is that nominal or peak? What? The stress? Or the simulation? Yeah. yeah. Peak. Sorry? There's the peak. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Why, why did you set a target at 20 and 25 instead of 25? And it's well, <laughs> it's, it's an improvement from, uh, see, last previous year's team, they didn't focus as well in the suspension. So they, but I would assume you'd try to set the bar to well, be the well, highest bar. We, we and if you didn't achieve it, you didn't achieve it. If we get 20 out of 25, it's still a huge improvement from any other, the other years. But our goal is 25 out of 25. We would love to, but I know our budget yeah, doesn't allow us. Right. To get a 25 out of 25 compared to the three and a half million dollar budgets that can make carbon fiber he everything. You. He has a lot of money. We even though it looks like um, 20 out of 25 in a great, uh, let's say in a test score is not as high like um, from school-wise, like when you think about it, but um, in competition when you add those 20 points and you add the rest of the, uh, of the rest, the other section. exactly, it definitely adds up to way more than um, 50 in the range of the first thing, so that's why. I think you guys, you, you go down greater than. 20, yeah. 20. <laughs> <laughs> greater than 20 or 25. We're not limiting the minimum. Our, our minimum is 20. Exactly. No, our minimum right. is 20. It's how they're posted. Yeah, it is. Correct. It is. Yeah, yeah, minimum is 20. So we're setting it as like a baseline. If we get more, then you know, the better for us. Okay, with that, turn the screen off and then come to the front You want to take a picture? Final picture, right? Final picture. You're the front